The story you are now seeing started back in 1935 when the first all-crop harvester came off the assembly line at LaPorte, Indiana. These were the machines which pioneered the development of home-owned and operated harvesting equipment on the family-sized farm. For the first time, home ownership and operation were made economically possible and financially sound. In the years following 1935, constant changes and improvements were made on the all-crop harvester to keep pace with the times. And so today, Alice Chalmers offers two great all-crop harvesters to meet every harvest need. The Model 66 pull-type machine and the Model 100 self-propelled, master of the harvest. Best of all is the fact that both these machines incorporate the same basic principles which made the original all crop so successful. Principles such as rubber to rubber shelling contacts, cross mounted thresher body which permits exclusive air blast separation behind the cylinder, full length positive grain drag and sawtooth wind control valves. Today with a choice of pull type or self propelled, whichever fits the job best, all crop harvesters are serving their owners well helping them to greater harvest profits. Now let's take a look at a few of the genes in various parts of the country and see for ourselves how versatile and economical they are. In this scene, it's spring in Florida. Time to harvest yellow lupin. This crop has to be harvested while it's still green in order to prevent shelling. But the all crop is more than equal to this condition and does a fine job in spite of the fact that the plant itself is half green. The seed comes out dry and clean, looks as if the whole plant were actually ripe. Then let's look at an entirely different crop in Nebraska, where it's speed and plenty of it with nothing to interfere in any way. This brome was light. A dry year made its effect felt over much of the country. But even so, with an all crop, there's a vast difference in handling not only brome seed, but most any crop you can mention. Here, the Model 66 takes on wheat and does a fine job for this Wisconsin farmer. He finds that the downward sloping sickle guards help pick up the down grain, and the six bat reel does an especially good job of feeding the crop evenly without bunching. Then of course the new model 100 self-propelled all crop has to strut its stuff in wheat too, as this one is doing at Nampa, Idaho, where the fields tell the size of the job. But since the model 100 is an all crop through and through, it proves itself equal to jobs of every kind. Another feature that pays off here is the ability of the Model 100 self-propelled harvester to unload on the run. In oats, the Model 66 does an outstanding job of feeding, and this same thoroughness is reflected in the way this machine threshes and cleans the grain. The six bat reel smooths out the flow of grain until it's remarkably even. That's just one of the features that make the 66 a standout in its class. The Model 100 can take an oat crop in its stride too. It goes in and does the job quickly, efficiently, and economically. Here's a place where the variable speed control, which gives a range of 30 forward speeds, is needed. The operator can instantly alter his ground travel to suit changing crop and field conditions, such as going from standing grain into a down or tangled spot or inching his way through a gully or swale. Barley takes on a new tune when it's handled by this fleet of all crops. The rubber cushion threshing contacts greatly reduce crackage or skinning of barley kernels. Helps you get a premium price where barley is sold for malting purposes. This one, harvesting malting barley in Colorado, happens to be a 66. But what really counts is the fact that it's an all crop. But just to make the story complete, Here's a Model 100 working in about the same condition, harvesting malting barley. The operator of this machine, working near Greeley, Colorado, has this to say about his self-propelled. It has all the simplicity of the pull-type all crop and does a fine job of threshing. As a combine, it can't be equaled. The vision from the operator's platform is perfect and operation is extremely easy. It's a great self-propelled combine. When harvesting operators talk like this, they must have their reasons. In the case of the 100, those reasons are apparent. First, it is a simple machine to operate. Second, it has big capacity. And third, it is quickly adapted to all kinds of crops. 
Now let's get away from the better known crops for a minute and watch a Model 66 working in White Lupin in Florida. This is another of those crops that must be cut while the plant is still green, making it a rough assignment for any combine. But the 66 takes it in stride, cleaning and saving this tough to get, high priced seed. Back to the 100 again, the pickup means a lot in some localities like this one in North Dakota, or like this one in pinto beans in Colorado when the beans must be pulled and windrowed. But it's all the same to the all crop. Now watch the 66. It appears right at home in harvesting this blue panicum, a cover crop in southern Texas. Blue panicum is a grass that grows quickly in all parts of Texas and protects the soil from wind and rain damage. Since it doesn't interfere with the growing of other crops and does stop wind erosion, land can be put into production that would otherwise lie idle. Sorghum is an important crop in the southwest and new heavier yielding varieties are being grown every year. The all crop is adapted to jobs like this and seems to thrive on them. This patch consists of 10 acres of Arizona certified high gear seed that is turning out about 3,000 pounds per acre. Here again, the all crop simplicity of operation and ease of handling prove invaluable to the operator. Returning to the 66, we find it getting in its licks in maize. This again is a somewhat difficult crop to handle, but comes under the heading of regular work for an all crop like this one, working in an Oklahoma field. The 66 easily takes in two rows of the crop, thus speeding the harvest, reducing crop losses. Now the 100 shows its merits in Sudan grass, which is especially valuable, but always hard to harvest, since the uppermost branches get ripe first and naturally shell out faster. The harvest of such a crop is always a gamble. A dry year helped out in this case, and the crop ripened evenly, but it was a light yield at best. Alfalfa seed is high priced and a scarce commodity. But the 66 with an alfalfa sieve and the correct wind control makes the job easy and profitable. The seed may set any year, but the operator must be ready for it. Red clover is a difficult crop in which to get a good seed stand. But when it hits, you've got to be ready with the right kind of harvesting equipment. This field turned out better than two bushels per acre for its owner and was ripe in plenty of time. With an all crop, there's nothing to it. Put in a clover sieve, set speeds and spacing, adjust the air, and the 100 is set to handle the job. Buckwheat is a crop that comes in late and is generally down and tangled. But the 100 makes an easy job of it, gets every available bushel. One look at this scene is all that's needed to verify the performance of the Model 100. Proof that the all crop really gets the down and tangled grain. Soybeans make an interesting harvest from any angle. They are usually weedy and cantankerous, but have to be harvested just the same. The 100 takes them either way, clean and standing like in this field in Indiana or otherwise. Whatever the condition of the crop, the Model 100 speeds up the harvest puts clean, whole beans in the bin. Sometimes, as the operator of this 66 is finding out, the soybeans are entirely different, defoliated and all ready for the harvest. But that's just the luck of the harvest. There are good years and there are bad. It's all part of the job. And with the right equipment, any job is easy. An important feature of the self-propelled to the growers in the wheat belt is the three-foot header extension. It makes a 12-foot machine out of the 100, better fitting it to the needs of the big grain farmers on the Midwestern Plains. December in Florida brings another unusual crop, indigo, brushy and coarse. It looks like a jungle, but it's all in a day's work for the all crop. Even the roads look like they lead through a jungle, but that makes no difference. The all crop goes right on through. Then it tackles another field with the same results as before. It threshes the crop and cleans up the field in record time. No fuss and no bother, even though it looks like a brush pile. It's all part of the job. And the all crop turns out a good sample of the seed, requiring no cleaning and no picking over. 
There are hundreds of other examples of the all crop harvester's superior performance in all kinds of crops. But it's the same story wherever you go. Whether it's full type or self-propelled, if it's an all crop, you're sure to get economical and dependable harvest performance year in and year out.